Hallelujah, hallelujah. We serve a living God that when we call upon him, he hears us. Hallelujah. And that's why we came in the house of the Lord so that we can bless his holy name and so that we can call upon him. Nothing is big before him. Even our burdens, he's able to carry them for us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. One is the Lord Bible in Asana ya kwamba wanizunguka ukuta wakipiga nuru wakisherehekea Bwana wakimshangilia Yesu naye Mungu akapata kutenda. I want us to shout unto the Lord this morning. I want us to give the Lord a shout of glory and he's going to receive it and do something in our lives. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you Jesus.
tu boca Ame tu kuka mi lele Ame tu kuka Ame tu kuka mi lele Ame tu kuka Ame tu kuka mi lele Ame tu kuka Ame tu kuka mi lele Ame tu kuka
worship you. We give you glory. Hallelujah.
Let it be so in our midst this morning. Psalms 46 and verse 4 and 5. Psalms 46 verse 4 and 5. This is the reason why we have joy in the house of God this morning. The Bible says there is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God. There is a river in the presence of God that gladdens our hearts, that casts out exhaustion, sorrow, that removes weariness, sadness from a man and a woman. There is a river that makes glad the city of God. The river that makes glad the people of God. There is a river that makes glad the church of Christ. The holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. The scripture continues to say that river is found in the tabernacle of God, in the dwelling place of God, in the sanctuary of God. And so when we have come into the place of worship, we have come into the tabernacle set aside for God. There is a river that makes joy the people of God. And verse 5 says, God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her just as the break of dawn. When we are in the presence of God, we have come into the place of receiving help from God. This is a promise in his word. Because the river that he causes to flow gives us joy. It gives us strength. It causes us to look beyond the physical and we see in the spiritual and we exercise faith in receiving what God has given to us. And the Lord is telling us that he is in the midst of the city. He is in the midst of the holy place and we shall not be moved. Those that wait upon the Lord, they shall be like Mount Zion. They shall rise up with the wings and they shall not be defeated. This morning are you there and you need strength. I want to tell you I've come into the sanctuary where the presence of God is. The river of God is flowing. The river of God is flowing even in this room. It all depends on your degree of sensitivity. You can choose to be absent-minded and in the house of God. And you can be a spectator. But you can also choose to be a participant. You can also make a decision. Say, I will raise my hands up. I will open up my mouth. If you are really a participant in this, I call your spirit into receiving the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord that makes us glad because this river is flowing in the presence of God in the sanctuary. God shall be in our midst and we shall not be moved. God shall be our help. Just as the dawn, the breaking of the dawn. Asubui jua ilichomoka giza ikaondoka. Uwepo wa mungu kichomoka katika maisha yako. Whatever form of darkness that is coming against you. It has no choice but to disappear. So can you lift up your voice and your hands. And give the Lord a mighty clap accompanied with a shout of praise. A shout of victory. Victory in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, we praise you, our Father. We worship you, our God. We praise you, Jesus. We thank you, Holy Spirit. For whatever it is that is before us, Lord, you have dealt with it. Sick bodies are receiving healing this morning, even by the ministry of the Holy Spirit. As we rejoice in your presence, as the river of God flows, giving us joy, exchanging our garments of sorrow, and giving us the garments of praise, we will walk out of this room with a song of praise. A song of rejoicing for God you have done it. You have met our needs. You have healed our bodies. You have encouraged those that were discouraged. You have strengthened the weak knees. 
you are giving strength to the feeble hand and we shall march out of this place like an army that is strengthened by the help of God. We praise you and we give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You can give the Lord a better clap. Oh, you can give the Lord a better clap. Thank you so much. Praise and worship. God bless you so much. God bless you so much. Even for helping us to celebrate the goodness of God. You can turn around, say hello to your neighbors. Appreciate them for being in the house of God this morning. It is a pleasure and you may have your seat in the name of Jesus. I take this opportunity to welcome each one of us, those who are here physically, those who are following us online. We bless the Lord for each one of you. It is church because we are gathered as the people of God. And remember this, because this is what the Holy Spirit has just reminded me as you are worshiping, that there is a river that makes glad the city of God. The presence of God gives you joy. And nobody can take it away from you. And because of that understanding, it does not matter what is your age. When it comes to dancing for the Lord, I do the best I know. Joy that is manifested physically. Joy is always connected with some emotional expressions. So don't tell me I'm rejoicing in the Lord when you are standing stiff like a stick. When others are taught to raise up their hands, yours are down. There is something that is not right in your life. And it is you who will get yourself out of that by taking the word of God, appropriating it to your life, and saying, no matter what comes my way, I choose to rejoice in the Lord. God bless you so much. Buenas, if you a son. Uh, the victorious generation, where are they? I am told they have a presentation, and the faster they are on the stage, the better for them. The victorious generation. It is their time. We want to give them this opportunity. After they are done, we want to receive our sister, Caro. She has a, a song she would like to bless us with. The Lord has gifted her as an, a, a song composer and also as a worship trainer. And so after the victorious generation are done, uh, she will take the microphone and give, bless the Lord with that song. In Jesus' name, amen. Karibun. We are the victorious generation. We are blessed by the best, highly favored by the best. So blessed we not be just. Amen. This morning, we have a man of us. Relax and be blessed. Amen. Jeremiah Tharabini na tatu, kustari wa tatu, inasema, niite na minta kuonika, na minta konesha mambo makubwa, maungumu usio ya jua. Jeremiah the Radini Natatu, Kustari Watatu, Nasema, Nite, Nami Takuitika, Nami Takonesha Mambo Makubwa, Mangumu Usio Yajua. Thank you. Jeremiah the Radini Natatu, Kustari Watatu, Inasema, niite, na minta kuitika, na minta konesha mambo makubwa, mangumu, usio, ya jua. Amen. Thank you so much. Our little children learning the word of God. Repeating a memory verse three times is the best way to ensure that it gets into your spirit, not just into your head. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let's welcome our sister, Caro. Hallelujah. Geukia mwenzako msalimio paki yesu. Amen. 
Opaki Yesu ni kusema bwana sifiwe. I want to minister with a song linalo sema jina la Yesu tamu liko katika tenzi za rohoni song number 5 and i want us to sing it all of us kwa sababu jina la Yesu ni tamu kama sio hili jina mimi singekujua tungejua ni wapi bwana Yesu asifiwe hilo jina limefanya tujuane la limetufanya familia moja ya fountain worship center kupitia hili jina biblia linasema ya kwamba ametununua kutoka kwa mataifa lugha na kabila na akatufanya kuwa kuhani wa kifalme amen and if you want to be a blessing to my ministry achieng sio carol achiengi usitafute achiengi utafute carol achieng amen jina la yesu tamu tukilisikia utu Henry ameipata. Yes. Please go to YouTube. Tuna subscribing nyimbo ya watanzania. Simu subscribe yangu yes. na uache hapo comment. Yes. Amen. 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 Kama unaweza nisaidie uanzishe vizuri. mkono ni kuone ya yeah, kuna wachache wako hapa mbele amen we bless god for them let's stretch our hands and pray for these children our loving father we want to thank you for blessing us with children they are a gift from you and we pray today as they go to be taught your word that father you are going to speak through their teachers revive their teachers encourage them and cause them God to be a great blessing to these children. May you minister to each one of them, help them even in their tender age to continue to know you and to love you. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. Beautiful girls and boys, the Lord bless you so much even as you go to the Sunday school. Uh, the Lord be with you in the name of Jesus. Bwana asifiwe sana. I hope you brought your Bible and you are ready to receive the word of God. Bwana Sifiwe, are you in a position to receive the word? Are you having your notebook? Because uh, the Lord has given us the grace to teach and so teaching we shall. As I said another Sunday here, we have been praying for revival and we are believing God for the outpouring of his spirit and power, but the Holy Spirit is also reminding us that before the revival comes, there is need for a wave of holiness because God can only dwell in a holy place. And so he has been leading us to matters that have to do with our hearts. Na tumeona kuna mambo amboya naweza fanya wepo wa mungu utuondoke. Siku ya leo sitaendelea nayo kwa sababu yale tumetaja yametuelekeza. But we are still dealing with issues that have to do with 
the presence of God being found in our midst. We looked at bitterness. We looked at striving last week. There are many other issues, jealousy, anger, malice, all those things. And you keep hearing them repeated. Roho wa mungu wa natunenea haya, diyo tuangalia mio yetu. So that none of us will miss an encounter with God because of issues that are hidden in our hearts that prevent his presence from being made manifest in us. So today before I start uh, teaching, allow us me to read some two scriptures, Matthew 27, I mean Matthew 7 is a scripture that our brother Peter read on Friday night and I just said, has he seen my notes for the Sunday service? Because that is what he started with when uh, leading the prayer session during the Kesha. The Bible says in Matthew 7, verses 24, I will read 24 and 25, and then you read many other scriptures thereafter. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and, the, and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. Jesus is helping us to understand the importance of taking heed to his commandments. And he starts this portion of scripture by saying, therefore. So I asked myself, why therefore? What was he referring to? And so I went back to 21, verse 21, and Jesus was saying, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. So the reason why he, that verse in 24 starts with therefore, it is because of the condition or the message that Jesus had expressed in the verses before. Yule ambaye atakaye eh, ingia ufalme wa binguni, sio yule anamuita buwana buwana, bali ni yule anatenda mapenzi ya baba liye binguni. Many people call the Lord Jesus Christ. We call him Lord. We call him many good names. But calling alone is not enough. We must get to that next level of being obedient to his word. And when we are obedient and when we do his word, then we be, are compared to the wise man who built his house on a solid ground, on a rock. And when a house is established on a firm foundation, it does not matter the weed, the rain, the storms of life, the house remains standing. So calling Lord, Lord by itself will not enable you to stand when the weeds of life come, when the waves of life beat you up, when the stresses of life and challenges come, Kuwa tu mutu wa kuitaka buwana buwana, haita kusaidia kama nyumba yako, kama imani yako, kama maisha yako, haita wekwa the biti juu ya muamba. What places us on the solid rock, it is by obeying the commands of our Lord Jesus Christ. The instructions that God has given us in his word. If you look at verse 23, he says, Okay, let's read 22 to 23. Many of you said to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. So it is possible to be casting out demons. It is possible to be performing miracles. It is possible from what you are hearing Jesus telling us, even to be giving people prophetic word. Don't diviners tell people things about their future and their past? Sindio. They, they use probability 
inspired by demon spirit, and they have taken very many people captives. Not every prophetic word is from the Lord God Almighty. It is not every miracle performed that is done by the power of God. There are many who do them. And on that day, Jesus said, they will say, Lord, Lord, didn't we? And they'll use the name of Jesus. But what will he say? Depart from me. I never knew you. And because of that word, he says, therefore, if anyone hears my, whoever hears my sayings, whoever listens, whoever takes heed, whoever obeys my saying and does them, I will liken him to a wise man. Oh, may God cause each one of us this morning to be counted among the wise. Men and women who are counted among the wise, just lift up your hand and pray for yourself this morning. Say, dear Lord, oh God in heaven, I desire to be among the wise. I want to be among the wise. Give me grace to obey your word, to hear your instructions. Open up my mind today. Open up my spirit this morning that I receive from you. I receive an encounter from you. I receive an understanding of your will for me to the glory of your name. In Jesus' name. Amen. The scriptures tell us in Isaiah chapter 1, if you read verses 19 and 20, encouraging us why we need to desire to obey the commands of the Lord. In Isaiah chapter 1 verses 19, the Bible talks about if you are willing and obedient, it takes you. Are you getting it? God is all powerful, almighty. He has done what he needs to do. For you to eat the good of the land, it depends on you. Born as if you were son. Put for us verse 19 and 20. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. This is a solid promise he has given us. He has fulfilled his part. It is your part. It is my part. If I am willing and obedient, I shall eat the good of the land. Can you open up your mouth and declare to yourself and say with me, if I am willing and obedient, I shall eat the good of the land. Surudia tena. If I am willing and obedient, I shall eat the good of the land. Wapendwa, there is good in the land. Eh, kuna kuwaga na wema katika nchi. Kuna uzuri katika nchi. But for you and me to access it, there is a condition there. And the scripture starts with the word, if. So now only enjoy the good of the land, if I do what the word of God is telling me. I am willing and obedient to do the commands of the Lord. Then I shall eat the good of the land in the name of Jesus Christ. Sio kuombewa na kuekelewa mikono na mafuta na nini itakufanya ule mema ya inchi. It is by you willingly receiving the instructions of God and obedient, obediently doing them in your life. So if he reveals a, a sin in your life, you willingly depart from it. You repent and return to God. If you are lazy and you have not been seeking his word, you repent and start seeking him. You do what he tells you to do. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Verse 20 says, but if you refuse, if you refuse to be willing and obedient, if you rebel, this is God speaking, very hard words to us as he spoke to Israel. If you rebel, if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword 
For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. So for us to eat the good of the land, it depends on our level of obedience. Obedience to the word of God. Obedience to the word of God. Obedience to the commands that he has given us. And this morning, I would like us to take some time to look at the commands in the New Testament that Jesus Christ gave and they were amplified in the epistles written by the apostles. I call them the one another commands in the Bible. The one another commands in the word of God. There are very many. We will not finish them today, but you keep studying them until we know what we are supposed to obey so that we can eat the good of the land in the name of Jesus Christ. The Old Testament prophesied and promised and gave types and shadows of Jesus Christ. So when we read the Old Testament, we see the prophetic word, the prophet speaking by the power of the Holy Spirit, talking about the Messiah to come. And when we study every book, we see Christ manifested in a certain typology or a symbol. But when we come to the Gospels, the gospel revealed who Jesus. They revealed Jesus. They tell us about his life, his birth, his life, his death. They reveal his beauty and his glory. When we look at the epistles, and I thank God for the working of the Holy Spirit, the epistles explain the full meaning of the life of Jesus. Of the death of Jesus. Of the resurrection. The epistles, the, prof, the, the, the apostles by the grace of God, by the enablement of the Holy Spirit. They explained so that we are able to understand how are we to relate with God. So today I pray that your ears should be open. Your inner ears should be alert. To receive this instruction, even as we see them as Christ gave us these commands. And as the apostles explained them to us so that we know how to obey God. So that we know how to live in him. We know what to do and not what to do in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The Bible, when we look at Matthew 16 and verse 18, Jesus was asking in that passage, he had asked his disciples a question. Whom do men say that I am? And they started by many, many answers. And Peter, by the help of the Holy Spirit, he actually said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. So in verses 18, Jesus made a very powerful statement. And he said, and I also say to you that you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of head shall not prevail against it. He changed the name of Simon, who was a reed. And called him Peter, a rock. By the revelation that Simon got, that Jesus Christ is not just another prophet. He was not just a good man. He was not just a teacher like the Pharisees. That he was the son of God. Jesus told him on this rock, on this foundation, on this revelation, on this understanding, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Friends, I want to declare this morning and remind you that the church that Jesus Christ is building, because he is still building his church, 
He has not come back to pick it from the face of the earth. He is still in the process of building. That is why me and you, we are here this morning. It is a strong church. It is a church that withstands the kingdom of darkness. It is a church that says no to evil and says I'm not giving ground. That is the kind of a person that Jesus Christ wants you to be. You are a stone, a living stone, built up in this building called the church of God. Kwa hivyo kanisa la mungu ni kanisa linanguvu. Kanisa hilo dhaifu ambalo tumejua kwa miaka kadhaa limekuwa letu si la mungu. Kanisa lile Yesu anajenga ni kanisa la watu wana ujasiri. Ni kanisa la watu ambao wana mwelekeo. Ni kanisa la watu ambao wanajifahamu. Ni kanisa la watu ambao wanasimama na kuambia shetani hupiti hapa. May the Lord help us today. So sometimes we get and gross in our discussions and think, oh, the church has lost, the church has missed. Oh, kuna vituko kanisani, kanisa za watu si la Yesu. Kanisa la Yesu lile anajenga ni kanisa la nguvu. Na wale ambao wako katika hilo kanisa ni watu wana ujasiri. Ni watu ambao wana nguvu, ni watu ambao wana mwelekeo. So may God help you today to join the church of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. That we stop living like weaklings. Watu ambao hawana tumaini. Upepo tu unakuja unakupiga unasongeshwa. Ukisikia jirani yako ni mchawi, unaanza kubabaika. Baada ya usimame hapo useme, ataondoka hapa siondoki. The Lord has given me his word wherever my feet shall stand wherever I shall tread upon I possess in the name of Jesus lakini wengi wetu tumekuwa wakukimbia kimbia 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 wachawi sijui muganga sijui jirani alinifanya alininenea may we be ashamed tuaibike kabisa kwa sababu hiyo sio kanisa la Yesu kanisa la Yesu ni kanisa liko na nguvu ninandiwa na tunenea Tukaweze kusikia ushauri wake. We hear his counsel. We get his wisdom. We understand how to be strong. We will stand up in our families and say, I put an end to the activities of darkness. I stand here as a priest of the Most High God. And in the name and in the authority that Jesus has given me, wickedness in my family will not prevail. I may be small in stature. I may not have education. I may not have a big name. But I have the name that is above every other name. The name of Jesus Christ. And that is why he is telling us today. Whosoever hears his word. Whosoever obeys his word. Is likened unto a wise man. A, one who, a wise man who built his house on a rock. Unapata ujasiri wa simba. Kwa sababu ata ya naitua Simba wa Yuda. Na tunaibaga sana Simba wa Yuda na Guruma. Lakini katika maisha tunaishi kama watu wa menyeshewa. Ata tuko waoga Simba huyo wako wapi. Can the lion of Judah roar in your life? And you, as you face the situations in the, and the circumstances of life, be bold, be courageous, because you know he is living with you. May the Lord help us this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ. The one another commands that we see in the scripture. They are the cement that put the blocks of the church together. Dio mota yenye inashikanisha jiwe lililo hai na jiwe lingine lililo hai. And that is why we need to look at these commands. Because they serve the way we build buildings and we take a stone and cut between one stone and the other we put some level of cement so that that stone can connect with the next stone and we keep building another stone and we put more mortar and we keep more mortar and more stones and we keep on until the building is done. However many flaws it is, the mortar is very important. This one another commands are the mortar that binds us together as living stones, the how building build up as a habitation for God, the temple that God has set here on earth, which is not a building with
physical but you and me the living stones bwana asifiwe sana as i was checking i realized that the word one another appears in the new testament a hundred times and it is derived from a greek word alelon a double l e l o n and this word simply means one another or each other it has to do with being mutually or reciprocal so there is about connection it is about relation it is about togetherness bwana asifiwe sana and out of this 100 one another or one another's commands in the bible 59 of those occurrences they are actually specific commands very specific commands of how what we are to do and how or not or what we are not to do so they show us how we are to relate or how we are not to relate and summarizing them together we find about 30 commands on how we are to relate they are positive commands the 59 of them you can break them down 30 of those verses or, or those commands there are more than 30 verses but they make up about 30 commands and six of them they tell us what we are not to do so this morning by the grace of god because we are here in the house of god look we will look at this one another commands because they are very important our obedience to these commands has everything to do with us as an you it has everything to do with you as an individual enjoying the goodness of the lord in the land of the living your obedience to these commands it has everything to do with you enjoying or eating the good of the land it also has everything to do with witnessing to those that are outside the faith in Christ and Jesus said in John 13 and verses 35 being one of the verses we will also read it later one of the verses of the command he he was telling his disciples about loving one another so that the world will know John 13 35 so that the world will know that we belong to him the bible says by this all we will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another bona sifiwe sana it's a great tool for evangelism hakuna mtu atatoka nyumbani kwenye kuna watu vita iko watu hawaelewani kuna machukizo home aingie kanisa yenye iko na vita It's only a fool who join such a group. I come from trouble at home and then I come to a church fellowship where people are fighting one another. Nobody will join us. But when we are together, when we are united, when we love one another, we become a house that can accommodate those that are wounded outside there. They have no one to love them. They find a place of love. They find a place of of connecting they find a place of receiving healing water they find a place of life and that is what they are looking for every man every woman including yourself including myself i want to be in a place where i feel i am loved where i feel i am recognized i am important and that's why jesus told the disciples and he is telling us today if you love one another then they will know that we are his disciples it will be 
easy to tell them about Jesus and they will also desire to follow and be like us in the name of Jesus Christ. So as we be looking at this one another's commands, when we implement them, when we practice them, we become the church that Jesus is building. The one another commands enable us to become the church that Jesus is building, the church that stands against the gates of hell and prevails to the glory of God. Amen? And before we come into those commands, let me say that the foundation of this one another commands is God himself. Yeye ndiye msingi wa hizi commands. When we look at them, we see God is the foundation of these commands personified in love. The Bible tells us in 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 to 8. 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 to 8. We find a very powerful statement here as we finish verse 8. But let us read from verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another. John is writing to believers. And he is reminding us today. And he starts by calling us a beautiful name. Beloved or dear brethren. Wapendwa. Let us love one another. For love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God. Are you getting that? Let us love one another. For love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God. And knows God. So kama huna upendo. Na upendi watu. Huwezi kuwa kutangaza na ku kuwa wakweli kusema unamjua Mungu You are not born of God if you do not have love Because when you receive the birth the new birth you receive Jesus the son of the living God and you are born again The first thing that comes into your life is a transformation that changes your heart and gives you love Love for God and love for the people. So the scripture is telling us, everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. Tell your neighbor, God is love. That is why he is the foundation of all these one another commands. The foundation of all these one another commands is love. And God is is love. Bwana sifiwe sana. I want to say God does not just have love. He is love. Kuna tofauti ya kuwa na upendo na kuwa upendo. God does not just have love. He is love. We am short in short I'm saying the nature of God is love. The character of God is love. And that is why what comes out from him is love. Love to us. Love to mankind. Love to his creation. Even when he releases judgment, he is still doing it out of love. Because he says to those whom he loves, he disciplines. He allows Challenges to come into your way so that they can turn you to him. He has placed you where he has positioned and placed you so that you can seek him because he loves you. He allows things to happen in our lives so that our attention can be returned to him. So can you close your ears to every lying spirit that whispers and tells you 
Mungu amekuacha. Liposa unaona hii mashida zote Mungu amekuacha. Amekuachilia hapo kwa sababu kuna mahali uli miss the way. And he is allowed you to go through what you are going through so that you can return to him. So when you realize that God is far from you, just turn back and go back to where you lost it and come to him. When you realize you have lived your life, you have never known peace, you have never known joy, you have never known love, it is because you have been outside God and he is there telling you, come to me. Just as you are, come to him who is love. And he will pour his love into your heart. And you will start seeing life in a different way. When we understand this truth, that God is love, his nature is love, out of him comes love. It changes and it influences the way we perceive God and also the way we relate with him and we relate with other people. May the Lord help us this morning. God demonstrated his love to us by giving us his son. Because he is love, what comes out of him is his love. And this love was demonstrated to mankind through many ways. Right from Genesis when Adam sinned, he did not come and kill him. He came and slaughtered an animal. To cover his covering, his nakedness. Right from the beginning of mankind, he's provided a way for man to be reconciled back to himself. As we are studying the book of Leviticus, we are seeing the ways that God provided through the processes of sacrifices for man to come back to him because of his love. His interest is not the sacrifices. It is bringing man back to himself. And in John chapter 3 verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. This is love demonstrated to us. Tell your neighbor love in action. God gave. And in John 15, and verses 3, Jesus Christ says the same words again about God loving us. John chapter 15 and verses 13. About because of love he gave. Greater love has no man than this, than to lay down his life for his friends. Jesus is talking about his kind of death that he is going to go through and the way he will lay down his life. So greater love has no one than this. Hakuna upendo mku kama hu. Wa mtu kutoa maisha yake kwa sababu ya rafikis. And he was telling his disciples, I don't call you servants. I call you friends. And then that's when he followed with this word. Greater love is no one, has no one than this. One laying down his life for his friends. Christ laid down his life for us because now we are friends of God. When we receive the gift of God, we are connected with God. We relate to him as our father, our friend, or our God. He showed us how we ought to love one another. Because he is love, he demonstrated love, love in action. And so he, he instructs us and he showed us how to love one another. If you go back to 1 John chapter 4 and you read now verse 9 to 11, you see... The same words, God demonstrating love to us. First John chapter 4, we read from verses 9 to 11. In this, the love of God was manifested towards us. 
that God has sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Katika haya upendo wa Mungu kadhihirishwa. So by God sending his son into the world to come and pay the penalty of our sins, he was demonstrating love, the kind of love he has for us. Verse 10. Verse 10 and 11. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Bwana sifiwe sana. Kama Mungu alitupenda kiasi hii, ametuonyesha upendo kwa kutoa mwana wake. Akatoka binguni kwa miaka 33 Yesu akakaa mbali na ufalme. Akaondoka katika kiti cha utawala mahali maandiko inatuambia he sits by the right hand side of God the Father. He left his place in heaven. He came to live on this earth. Live like a poor man while he owned everything. Lived a humble life when he was a king. He lived serving others while he was a master. And God did this because of love. The word of God is telling us, if God so loved us, if God so loved you, if God so loved me, we ought to love one another. And this is the reason why we are getting into this study to see this one another commands in the name of Jesus Christ. We want to understand them. Because he loved us, we ought to love one another. And we have learned, and the scripture tells us in Romans chapter 12 and verses 5, that though we are many, tingawa tu wengi, tuwa makabira tofauti katika taifa letu. Katika ulimwengu kuna watu wa kabila tofauti, rangi tofauti. Though we are many, we are one body. The way a body has different parts, so it is the body of Christ Jesus. The church, the body of Christ. So we being many are one body in Christ. And individually, individually, tell your neighbor, individually, Members of one another. Get hold of your neighbor. Shika mikono ya jirani pandeza zote bili. Yes. Mwambie individually. We are members of one another. I know you can't look at two of them at a go. So huyo mwingine mwenye hukuweza kuangalia muangalia. Mwambie wewe binafsi. Sisi tuko sehemu ya oh, members ni washirika ye yeah, wa mwili moja katika jina la Yesu we are members of one body and that is why i said this one another commands they act like the cement and the sad what we call it mortar si tunachanganyanga simiti na mchanga kiasi Na resho ile fundi ya natuambia. Dio ikichanganywa, ikiwekelewa mawe juu ya ingine, inashika na uwezi ukasukuma yu kuta na mkono wangushe. Ata leo hii tukishikana hapa wote miya yetu na tuishike mikono ituseme yu kuta tunakuangusha, tunakuangusha katika jina la yesu. Kazi bure. Hayendi mahali. Because there is the mortar that connects the stones together. It takes another very powerful force to bring this wall down. Are we together? We are individually members of one another. And you cannot live alone. So kama umeku kifikiria, I don't need anybody. I want to tell you today, you need everybody. 
Sababu tumepitia mambo you, sometimes you feel like I don't want people in my life. I want to tell you today you need people. It's not that you want, you need. Unahitaji watu. Haijalishi umebarikiwa na utajiri wako ukafika wapi unahitaji watu. If you are in business, you only make your profits from people, so you need people. Whatever you do in life, you need somebody. You need somebody. And God knows it, that's why the word is telling us we are members of one another. So all of us, we are one body. Though we are many, we are one body. We are one body in Christ. Yes, we are one body. In this room, like Fountain Worship Center, we are one body. Many of us, but one body. But I, we are being reminded, and individually, members of one another. So may God help me. Oh, to know how to relate to the people. To know how to relate with the members in the body. For I need them. I need you. You need me. I need you. You need me. Ya ukia jirani muambia, I need you. Ege, ayata kama ni kuangalia nyuma, angalia nyuma. Angalia uso wa mutu. Wacha ni kuniangalia, misi jawambia muniangalia. Geuza shingo, geuza kiti ukitaka. Angalia mtu muambia, I need you. There must be a conversation here. I need you. And you need me. Hiyo ni ukweli. Ephesians chapter 4 and verses 25. Paul still writing on the, this issue of being members of one body. Being members of one body. He says, therefore, putting away lying, let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor. Uyo jirani amba umemuambia unamuhitaji, sasa mandiko inakuambia what you are to do with them. Speak the truth, for we are members of one another. So whatever happens to your sister, it is affecting you. Upende usipende. Ujue usijue. Whatever happens to that neighbor, it affects you. Ni kama kidole chako cha mkono kikiumia, the whole body suffers. So when your neighbor is suffering, when your sister in church is suffering, when your brother in church is suffering, we are all affected. For we are members of one another. Bwana sifiwe sana. And I think I will stop there today with that introduction. Before we get into the actual commands, I told you there are 30 of them. So we will not finish them in one Sunday, not even in two Sundays. I will not even promise three Sundays. But it is important we understand why we need to know this one another commands. So that we strengthen our relationship, our fellowship, one with another. I would like us to do a prayer, to stand up, and we have some two prayer points, even as we continue. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 12, 1 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 12, it says, and may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all as we do for you. This is Apostle Paul writing to the believers in Thessalonica and he is asking them and praying for them. Actually, it's a prayer that the Lord may increase their love and that they would abound in that same love. The same words are almost repeated in Philippians chapter 1 and verse 9. I would like us to look at that, then we'll do prayer. We'll pray for ourselves. Philippians chapter 1 and verse 9. 
says, talks about love abounding in knowledge. And this I pray is also a prayer. And that's why we want to pray. That your love may abound still more and more in knowledge and in all discernment. So I want us to pray for ourselves. I want to us to pray for two things. Number one, that the love of God will increase in your life. That that love will increase. Inua mikono ya kuambie mungu, ongeza upendo wako ndani yangu. That you may know how to love the way God loves. Since he has demonstrated to us how to love by giving his very best. Oh God, I come to you this day. You who gives grace, I pray that you may increase your love in me. You increase your love in my heart. Increase your love in myself, that whatever God I do, I will do it out of love. Do it out of love to you and to my brothers and sisters. Open up your mouth and talk to God. Ask him to increase, increase Lord, increase your love in me. Iyo kidongo ambo imekua buwana naomba uyongezi. Ili nikaweze kupenda wapendo wa dugu zangu, dada zangu vile unavyo taka. Increase your love in me to the glory of your name. Our second prayer item is related to the same. Pray that God, God's love will abound in you, in knowledge and in discernment. Mungu wa kuongeze Upendo huu uendele kuongezeka dani yako. Akupatie ujuzi na uweza wakupambanua mambo. So that you will not be taken captive by the devil. And you will not be a weakling just loving in foolishness. Lakini utaweza kuwa na ability to design when to correct and when to, to encourage. Somebody wrote and said, love given without discipline or correction, it is too soft. Haiwezi kasaidia. Lakini discipline peke yake, bila upendo, it is too hard. It also breaks. So the Lord should give us, pray for yourself that you receive, as this love abounds more and more in you, that you receive knowledge and discernment in the name of Jesus. Lift up your hand. Nimekwambia wewe unajiobea siku ya leo. Upendo wa Mungu kaweze kujaa ndani yako. Ukawe mwingi. Oh God, I pray today that your love will abound in me more and more. That your love will abound in my brothers and sisters more and more. And Lord, this love will abound in knowledge and discernment. That I will know how to respond to my brothers, to my sisters in their hour of need. I will have the right word to speak. I will have the right action to do. I will have the right expression to give, to bring glory and honor to your name. To say, dear Bona Kama Kanisa Lako. To say, dear Yes, to Kua Ushirika Katika Nyumba He. That we will abound more and more in sincere love. Love for one another. For we are members of one one body and individually we are members of one another. Lord, we thank you. Get hold of the hand of your neighbor. Just hold somebody's hand. Hold somebody's hand. And I want you to pray for that person. And ask God to fill them with his love. And give him the grace or give her the grace to love other people. To love like God would want the person to love. And to bind you together with that individual. Bind us together, oh God, with strong cords of love that cannot be broken. That we shall be the church. Oh God, your love will flow from within us. Knitting us together, 
binding us together, influencing what we think and say about one another. Oh God, with the sincerity so that we be the church, the church that Jesus you are building. You have told us this morning that you are building a strong church, a church that the gates of hell cannot prevail against. Lord, strengthen the cement between us as brethren. Strengthen the cord of love between us as brethren, between us as friends, between us as believers in the body of Christ. Strengthen the bond of peace in the love of Jesus Christ our Lord. We praise you this day. We worship you today. We magnify your name. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. And before we close, I would like to request, if you are in our midst and you have never given your life to Jesus, you have never allowed him to come into your life and fill you with his love and cause you to know this love of God that is so great, so deep, so wide, so high. Today is your day. If you are willing and obedient, the Bible says you shall eat the good of the land. If you are willing to receive the Lord Jesus Christ in your life and accept him as your savior and your Lord, he is ready to receive you. For it, whoever comes to him, he never casts them out. Are you there and you'd like to receive Jesus as your savior? Just lift up your hand. The Holy Spirit has been speaking to you as an individual. And you'd want to accept this gift of God that he gave for us. If you are listening online, the Lord will save you gloriously because he is the one who saves and he is the one who delivers. And he will fill you with his love. And you will have a purpose for living you will have a reason for rejoicing. Do you have anybody in the sanctuary this morning who would want to say, yes, Lord, I'm here. I have not known love. I have not known love. I have not known love from home. I have not known love from friends. But I come to you because you are love. God, I want to receive your love. Are you there? The Lord bless you. Thank you for that one that has lifted his hand. In the name of Jesus. If there is any other person, as we are meditating on this word, just as you are come to the Lord, Jo Kwayes, Jo Kwayes, Uji Sivile Ulivio, Akujaze na Upendo Waki. Akujaze na neema yake. Thank you, young man. This one, receiving the love of God. Anyone else would like to join with him? You came to church today. Maybe it's your first time in Fountain Worship Center. But you've come to a place where the Lord will express his love to you. And you'll be loved and you are loved in the name of Jesus. Let's pray with this young man in the name of Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus. I come to you I come to you. this morning. This morning. I've, heard your word, I've heard your word. And I believe you, and I believe you. that you came, that you came and left your home in heaven. You came to die for me. Today, I receive the gift of life that you gave me. That you gave me. I, believe I believe that you died for me, that you died for me. and your blood, your blood is enough to wash away my sins. I receive today the forgiveness that you provide. I ask you, Lord Jesus, to wash me, to cleanse me, make me a new creation. I thank you because you resurrected from the dead. And today, my life is changed, transformed by the power that raised you, Jesus, from the dead. I am a new creation. I am a child of God. I refuse Satan. 
with all his deceptions. Today, I receive power over sin, over the devil, over death, and over hell. In the name of Jesus, I believe that I have eternal life because of the word of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, I want to thank you. You are the God who calls those that are far away and you bring them to yourself. And I pray this day that you fill this young man with such peace, knowing that he is forgiven and his name is written in the Lamb's book of life. And he is a child of God. He will no longer walk alone, but you walk with the presence of God with him. So let him flow in your love. Let the river of joy even flow in his heart. To the glory of your name, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We praise God. Our brother Peter, can you please take care of this young man? In Jesus' name. We celebrate Jesus for his doings. We celebrate Jesus for his mercies and grace. Hallelujah. We would like to receive the offerings, the tithes, as we come towards the end of the service. Whatever it is that you have prepared, purposed in your heart, the scriptures say that the beginning of the week, let everyone give what he has purposed in his heart. So there is that which you have set aside to bring into the house of God to worship the Lord with and appreciate him for his faithfulness. As you sit down, the worship team will lead us. We, I want us to pray. And as they lead us, you bring it to the front. Those who are following online, you can send it using our uh, buy goods uh, number 97, um, 957711. Buy goods, 957711. Uh, and God bless you so much. Let's pray. Loving God, we bless your name this day. We thank you for loving us and reminding us that you are love. And we thank you for your word today. As we bring our tithes and offerings into your place, Father, we thank you for opportunities you give us. And we pray that you bless whatever we bring to you. Cause it to increase so that it can be useful even in the expansion of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. The Lord bless you. Put 